Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Caitlin and today we are doing kind of a more chill, fun drawing day because I have been obsessed with Into the Spider-Verse. Uh, Spider-Man is probably my number one top favorite superhero. So as soon as I knew that there was a new animated film coming out about Spider-Man, I, I was already pumped. And the visuals from the trailers and everything got me so, so excited. And from that movie, there's been a trend on all of the social medias of everyone making their own spider Sona. And I knew I wanted to jump on this because I actually have a very uh, kind of special place in my heart for Spider-Man original characters because um, for just a little bit of looking into the past of Caitlyn, um, when I was younger, I was really obsessed with Marvel comics and I actually wanted to draw for Marvel. Um, but this was before I discovered manga and anime and it completely turned my career path. But at first I wanted to draw more for Marvel DC kind of American comics. And so I did a lot of like Spider-Man tracing and like uh, Spider-Woman and Spider-Girl and all those uh, different offshoots from back in the 90s. And so I drew a lot of Spider-Man fan art and original characters. So back then I also had an idea for a series that I think you guys have heard me talk about before, but if you haven't, I created a manga series called Jade Dragon. I only got uh, one book published because I had some printing errors with the second one and just kind of lost steam on it and felt like it needed to be rewritten. Um, but when I first imagined the series, I basically took Spider-Man and, or Spider-Girl, made her have like a scaly suit with horns and claws and made it much more like a green dragon. So that honestly was my first, I guess you could say spider Sona. It was like literally if you took spider girl and just put a new skin on her and uh, yeah, that was my first spider Sona. But now that I'm a little bit older and can, I guess more creatively think, not saying that young minds cannot creatively think, but for me, I know that I was 100% just copying what spider girl looked like. I just slapped on some new stuff, but either way, I was so excited to jump in and do my own Spider-Man-esque character or villain or hero, and I just was so pumped, especially after the Spider-Verse. No spoilers, I won't spoil anything about the movie, but it just left it so open for the uh, basically infinite universes and infinite spider people, and I think that's what really sparked on the Spider-Sona uh, fan base is just, everyone thought, well, you know, if these ones could exist in the movie, then why can't mine? And it just like exploded. So with that, I introduce Weaver, who is based off of a spiny orb Weaver. And literally this is like, if I was a Spider-Man character and I was my own spider superhero, this is what I would look like. And uh, I keep going back and forth on the characteristics for this character, just because how I, would, if I was actually this character, I know I would be a hero. I wouldn't want to be like a villain or anything just because of my nature and predisposition and how I treat people. I know I, I couldn't bring myself to be a villain, but when writing and thinking about this character and their origin and maybe abilities, I'm like, man, this character would be really cool as like an anti-hero or like really teetering the line between villain and hero. So I'm gonna go with that. So Weaver is kind of an anti-hero, kind of goes between doing good and evil, but usually it's like evil for the, the right reasons type of thing. So that's at least my thought process with this character. In terms of special abilities. So the spiny orb Weaver, I really love the spines that are on the actual spider. So I wanted to make sure to carry those over in the uh, hood and then on the gauntlet area. But then I wanted to carry it even further with the webs. I can imagine, at least for me, the webs would be kind of like barbed wire, but you wouldn't really see the spines on it because they'd be pretty dang small. I could just imagine um, someone grabbing on to the web and just getting a ton of pricks in their skin. And then Weaver is the only one who can really resist how spiny the web is. And then just imagine like, if she shot like a ball of web, it would just be this jumble of basically very fine barbed wire that would suck to get hit with. So that's what I just imagine happening. It's just this giant ball of spikes just plummets towards enemies. 
And while I was working on this, I was actually live streaming and I had a couple ideas sent to me throughout the chat and I really like uh, my mod Sleepy suggested maybe uh, having some type of psychoactive, like mind melding type of thing that's added to the webs. So I thought that'd be kind of an interesting extra ability, like maybe my character is able to develop some type of serum that kind of drives a person insane. I kind of imagine it like how uh, Scarecrow in Batman has that uh, gas that kind of brings out your worst nightmares. Kind of a similar thing, but I don't know exactly what my character's serum would do. So I would, I'm gonna leave it open to you guys. If my character had some type of mind melding serum that would be laced in her web, what would you do? Would you make it like worse nightmares? Would it be more like psychedelic? Like they're just really tripping out on some serious drugs. What are you thinking? Like, I would love to hear what your guys' thoughts and ideas on are on that. So besides those special abilities, I would say usually the typical Spider-Man abilities like super strength, spidey senses, um, really quick reflexes for sure. And I think that would just be the main ones. I just kind of like the idea of a very classic spider girl with just a couple extra abilities with maybe the psychoactive drug thing and then the spiny webs instead of the regular webs. And this one was, I, I knew instantly what spider I wanted to do. I knew about the spiny orb weaver and I just love the look of that spider in general. So I knew that I wanted to make a Spider-Man character based on this amazing spider. And with that, um, I wanted to carry over a lot of the colors from the spiny orb weaver, but then I also branched out into a few other colors. Like I would say the main colors for the one I was referencing were uh, white, black, and red. But if you look on Google, there's actually like an orange and black one too. And I think those are the two color variations I found. So I brought in a little bit of orange for another pop of color. And I thought it fit perfectly too, because like you guys know me, my avatar, I usually have with like an orange shirt or some type of pop of orange because I really like the color orange. So it just worked that I was able to just put in a little bit of an orange flare to this character on the boots and the belt and in the eyes. And then I love reds. I love bright, warm colors. So it was nice to put in the red. I also really love maroon. So I added the maroon in for this one and that matched my hair color and everything. And speaking of the hair color, do not ask me how the hair comes out of the mask because I don't know. <laughs> I could imagine there might be like a slit in the mask that just lets a little bit of the hair out, but then that kind of, you know, uh, puts into jeopardy the structural integrity of the mask. Like who knows, it could slip down the face in the front or whatever. So, I mean, don't ask how the hair is out. It just is. <laughs> I just like it as the design. It has no, uh, I, d I don't have any idea how it would work practically. So either way, I just, I like that little extra bit of uh, flair, I guess. Oh, and to go back with the idea of the drug laced webs, I was thinking if it was kind of psychoactric and like a uh, kind of fear inducing, I noticed if you look at the uh, design of the mask along with the emblem on the chest and on the back, it looks very much like a skull. Like if you look at the spiny orb weaver, those black dots on the white spider make it look like a skull face. And I think that would trip people out. So if it did have some type of like fear inducing or just really amp up your brain into thinking like everything is a threat, God, this character would look crazy creepy, especially in the middle of the night in an alley somewhere in New York, they would just mess you up. And along with that, actually, I'm curious, what city do you think our weaver should originate from? I'm from Arizona and um, I know that we have Phoenix, but I would say we don't have obviously a bunch of like skyscrapers and high rises like we do in uh, like New York and such. But uh, I don't really know what city I'd want this character to originate from. For me, I was kind of thinking France would be pretty cool, especially because I put a gargoyle from Notre Dame. I think that was one of my favorite places to visit. And I think French would be a pretty cool setting for this, but I'd love to hear what you guys think. What city do you think this character would live in? I'm kind of voting for France, but let me know what you think. So anyway, thank you guys so much for stopping by and checking out this video. I know this was more of a chill video, but I'm currently getting over a sinus infection. So uh, I had to take it easy for this week's videos, but I hope you still enjoyed it. 
Either way, I will see you guys on Friday for another 100 Dragons. Thanks for stopping by. And if you aren't already, you can go and hit that subscribe button. I have new videos every week. And I'll see you guys later. Bye, guys.